What's up, y'all? This is Omega Red, and big shout out to the Urban Influencer, the biggest platform for breaking artists. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the Urban Influencer Radio. Tonight, I have um, a very interesting uh, artist with us today who has a lot of history. I have the one and only, shall we call you your government name or you want us to just call you Omega Red? You, you, you call me Omega Red or, okay. uh, Red, or Red for short. That's my okay. nickname. Omega Red, we ain't going to call you your government name. <laughs> well welcome sir how are you tonight um i'm doing well and thank you for having me i appreciate it and i appreciate the love and the support and uh i appreciate being on your platform all right well thank you so um rapper yes songwriter correct producer that is also correct actor that is also correct uh arranger also an arranger <laughs> okay and then you got a bunch of other jobs um i don't know if i got a bunch of other jobs i you know i i started my own uh payment processing company um and then you know i run the the music label and the, um and uh the music publishing company so i, I don't I would say that and all that, that all encompasses with the music stuff. So like State Ground Inc. Is, has like an umbrella and that's that runs that runs all by on its own. Now, I've been doing that for the past 20 plus years. Okay. So now it's that's kind of turnkey for me. So and then I have the payment processing company, which I've been doing that for 10, 15 years. And that's turnkey also. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say they're kind of jobs. I'm, a, I'm kind of like the founder of them. Okay, so I'm gonna say this, and this is this is like one of those things. Uh -huh. I just realized that you are a Libra, so ha ha happy Libra season. Okay, thank you, thank you. Are you a Libra? I am a Libra. Gang, 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 gang. <laughs> so one of the things as I'm listening to you and you're spilling out, you do this, you do that. Uh -huh. You one thing about Libras is that we are definitely driven. I've met some non-driven Libras though before too. And very, I would very... look at them and, and say, are you really a Libra? <laughs> it's, been, it's, been, it's been very rare. It's been very rare, but I have met a few. So, okay. but yeah, most of us, most of us are very, very driven individuals. It's just something. Yeah. So would you say that you being born and your birthday is a couple of days before mine. So would you say that um your being a libra mm -hmm. um is something that kind of pushes you um let me see um i just think i had a lot of great examples um growing up what success looked like and um i don't know i think the 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 universe or or the god given talent that was given to me um I just think I just knew what I wanted to do at a very young age, um, you know, but when I was young, I didn't know which direction to go, but I always had like a, a, a entrepreneurial spirit, a hustler, a hustler spirit. Um, but, you know, my, my parents couldn't really, my parents knew what they knew, right? They couldn't, they couldn't help me channel that entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know, they, they worked hard, you know, and put, put a roof on their head try to put get us in a better situation. You know, if I knew about like passive or residual income and royalties at a young age, I it might have I might have took a different turn in my life. Mm -hmm. But I found I eventually got there though, you know? So but being a being a Libra, I feel like um that was also a plus because we're the best. You know, so <laughs> that's just my opinion. That's how I feel. I, you want to act? I feel that. <laughs> yeah, I feel that way too. I feel like we're the so, best zodiac sign. You know? Yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like we can. I feel like we can. We can move in so many different circles, and then um, and then sometimes you know it was hard for me to mix my circles together. You know, but I got to the point now where I just don't care no more. It's like if y'all ain't meshing, that's on y'all. That's on you. <laughs> that's on you. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yep. So so 
in looking at a lot of the stuff that you're doing, I um, I also was really intrigued by, I'm going to jump around with my That's list fine. of That's questions. One of the things that really intrigued me was um, your acting. Yeah, acting is a really tough thing for me, but, you know, I'm getting back into it. Um, I got some really good people around me now that that's helping me with that. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking a deep dive back into it. Okay. So what was it like working with Martin Scorsese? Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you, uh, this is my favorite story. I haven't told too many people this, so I'm giving you, I'm giving, since you leave, and, that's, gonna, and that's what I want, I'm gonna, I want I'm that. I'm gonna give it to you. Okay. So I'm on set, um, and I was on set for like two weeks. All right, I was a principal extra because we, was, we were in a close scene with Mark Ruffalo and uh, um, Leonardo DiCaprio. And by the way, Leo is cool. Like he's the most humblest actor I've ever seen. But I see, I watched him, like he inspired me because I watched how he would flip the script when he would go, um, you know, start to film. And he liked to smoke marble lights. So he would come out every morning in the trailer and he smoked his marble lights and he had little cliff notes. He had these little cliff notes and he would just sit there murmuring to himself. And then, um, you know, we shoot the scene, he get into the, to the scene. And it just to me, it seemed like he was just um, overacting. Like, you know, like, and I was just like, oh man, he's like really going in on the, and uh, going in on the scene. And then this is the Martin Scorsese part. So the the assistant director at the time was like, oh, you know, uh, he's like, uh, Leo, you know, uh, uh, he's like, uh, Marty, Marty thought you was like a little bit too extra, you know, and and, and then Marty's like, oh, oh, he's like, oh, no, no, Leo, no, 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 you did just fine, you did just fine. And I was like, dad, I was like, yo, he's kissing his butt. So that was like, the, that was the, that was the, that was one of the moments that I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, Leo's really that dude. Like even Martin Scorsese <laughs> was like, you know what I'm saying? Kissing his butt. And, but he was extremely tiny. Like I, I didn't realize how tiny he was. He was almost like a midget. Like he was like 4'11". Really and, tiny. And, and I was going to ask that question because now that I am an adult and I have met all of these celebrities that I looked up to, yeah, I do notice that a lot of them are really like short. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I first started like really being around a lot of celebrities and everything like that, I'm just like, yo, I'm in the land of the munchkin land over here. You know what I'm saying? Like I, now I see why these dudes got, they, they got Napoleon complexes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Drew <laughs> yeah, Hill. So. Have you been around Drew Hill? Um, I haven't been around Drew Hill, but I but I could tell that I could tell what's the name. I could tell a lot of them were short though. They're really short. <laughs> <laughs> I was on stage with uh it was Drew Hill, and I think Mint Condition was there as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm five seven. Okay, yeah. All right. You you so I'm like, and plus you probably got her heels on too. So yeah, so I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm five seven. So they were performing. I was like, oh my goodness, they are short. So yeah, so so that is, yeah, one of the things. But I just thought that was like really cool that, you know, you were, you're acting. And then, so let me, let me go back okay. to my first sheet. So when did you first know that you had something? Um, all right, so I, I was, I think this is probably like, I was probably like second, third grade and i'm gonna get and, you um, to turn your mic up just a little bit okay yeah actually is that better is that better is that better it might be my mic let me turn my mic up okay try now is that better it is yes okay cool so i was about second third grade and um i was watching tv and i just looked at this majestic instrument and I was like, mom, I want to play this. It was a saxophone. Mm -hmm. So she got it for me. And my dad was like, that boy don't, that boy don't want to play that thing. He don't want to play that saxophone. So I kept bugging my mother and uh, they got me the saxophone. And I think I played when I, as soon as I got it, I started playing it every day. I didn't even know how to read music or anything like that yet. And like within the second week, whatever, I would just start playing things verbatim, like, you know, just by ear. Um, and, uh, that's my parent, my mom, my mom knew I was like, okay, he has, he has a gift. And then my dad was like, he just, he's like, man, oh, oh, like since I'm older now, he told me, he's like, he was like, yeah, man, we, I didn't think he was going to play it like that. He's like, one day I just came home and you just playing that thing. I didn't believe you was playing it like that. So, so that's when 
I kind of knew I was kind of musically inclined. And then, um, you know, I got into marching band, jazz band, and I did all those things all through junior high school, you know, elementary, junior high school, and high school. So, okay. Okay. So, so I am a musician. So I'm a true musician. Yeah. And that was one of my questions. What instruments mm -hmm. do you play? Because I saxophone and what yeah, else? Keyboards, you? saxophone and keyboards. But saxophone is my my go-to instrument. That's That's my um that's my that's my first love so okay and how does the instruments um help with your creativity well in, you know being a being a jazz musician growing up playing jazz is improv improvisation which you know um jazz took a you know hip-hop took a lot from jazz as far as freestyling so freestyling is a form of uh improv with with words with you know so um that's kind of how i kind of honed my hip-hop skills you know through the transition from jazz to hip-hop okay good all right so we asked when did you think you were special i was listening to one of your interviews so i kind of went through a couple of the interviews that you had out there mm -hmm. and so in one of them you were talking about um something really important that some artists probably need to know about you're talking about um, how um, artists or how you need to learn how to understand the business. Yes, because it's a business. <laughs> right. And you kept emphasizing it's a business. Yeah. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you're talking about streaming, you're talking about you don't have to... Um, uh, people are focusing on the top versus focusing on how to make money. Right. Well, my, my whole thing is, you know, um, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with being at the top. If you want to be in the top, go ahead, be in the top. You know, that's fine with me. Um, but, you know, my thing is, you know, being in this industry and seeing a lot of things, um, I'm okay with, you know, not being, not being on the top. I'm okay mm -hmm. with having a core fan base and, making money directly to the consumer. Um, I also do a lot of music publishing. So I have over like 3000 placements on TV and film. Licensing and publishing is very important. Um, and I own all my masters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, you know, me, I'm, I'm okay right now. I mean, I, you can always do better, but I'm not gonna compromise my uh, moral compass or um, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I don't want to like um, send a message to keep the vicious circle and the cycle of drugs, um, crime, you know, violence to the, the Black African American community. I want to show them I did do some of that stuff. I did, I, and I paid the price to it. But I learned how to instead of uh, selling illegal product, I learned how right. to sell legal product. You know, mm -hmm. so I there's a so I'm going through I, I'm I'm going through a transition, and I want to show you that transition how I did it. Because that's the whole thing. They want they want us. The industry, like I had, I had a conversation with this uh, white guy that owned a studio, and he was like, "Oh, Rob, I don't like, you know." And he got me. He, he got millions of dollars, you know. And he's like, "I don't right. like all that. Rap. I don't got all. I don't like all that stuff promoting, you know, violence to the rap." I was like, "Okay, well, buy a radio station and then just play, you know, all positive rap music." Then are you gonna do that? Since you don't want to hear that, right? No, they're not gonna do that, right? So it's just like. You know, exactly. my whole thing, I mean, everyone has their genre. If you want, listen to a white radio station, they don't be talking degrading their women. They, you know, they talk about None parties of it. and stuff like that, but None it's, like of a, it. positive, it's None a, of it. a positive thing. They, 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 right. they, they, they inject positivity into their culture. You know what I'm saying? With our culture, it's not like that. So I believe, like, I mean, I understand, like, there's criminality and stuff and, you know, and swag and all that. I mean, it, that all serves a, a purpose. I get it, but it, sh it shouldn't be the majority. So Agreed. that's just Agreed. how I feel about it. Agreed. So I like to be, so I, I like to show people how to make money, how to make a living. You can make an easy $150,000, $200,000 in the music industry and nobody, I mean, I don't get, I guess it's who the popular people think they are because I have friends that are touring around the world right now and they don't get no radio play. So, I mean, what does that tell you? I mean, I, right. I, and, I, and, I, and, and they inspire me because they show me they're living their truth, you right. know, so, and they're doing it. So right. was it a longer path? Yes. But is it going to, is it, he, they're doing their, what they're doing is, is, is passing down legacy, you know, because they built that brick by brick, 
you know? So, and I was there to see it, you know? So that's just how I feel. And speaking of placements, I think I heard, I was doing something and I, I heard your song, uh, Do It For The Gram for oh. a phone commercial. I don't know. 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 One of my big placements though, um, was Black Lightning. I did the theme song for Black Lightning. Right. I was personally. gonna got that. But I don't know. I don't I don't know if I got a placement for doing for Grammy. Right now I got a right now they're working on some placements. I, I think it was it was it was the it it was a it was a um it was a telephone commercial. I, don't, I, I haven't heard it yet. <laughs> you haven't heard it yet. But, but you just I, know I, my stuff. You just know your stuff is out there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'll see in the. I'll see in the reports in the next quarter. You know, and in, in royalty. You know, when I see my statements, I, when I see my royalty statements, I see everything. You know, everything okay. is reported. So, yeah, but that's I a good saw, look, though. Th thanks for putting yeah. me on to it. Yeah, I saw that. That's like I was. Um, and I didn't realize you guys didn't know or if they had to like get permission from you to use some of your music. Oh no! I mean, once once they once someone plays something, like all my stuff's registered. So um, on that, you know, on uh, ASCAP. So anything that anyone plays, I, I you know, they capture all that. So I'm not worried. <laughs> okay, because I was I was uh, I was watching uh, Pose, and they were playing. No, no, no. This this wasn't you, but this was this oh. was the '69 boys, and I texted him and I said hey, your song is on Pose. And he was like, what episode? <laughs> yeah. So that, that, I didn't realize they didn't know that, that y'all right. didn't know that your music was being put well, into... Well, I like to, well, I have a co-publishing deal and I work with people that work directly with the networks. So like anything I do, I know it's going to be a place. I just don't know where it's going. Okay. All yeah. right, cool. That's really cool to know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really cool. But yeah, I... I I saw it telephone <laughs> and I said, Hey, that's so make red. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for putting me on. I didn't even know. So that's a yeah. good look. So I saw that and I, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. So it's like, and now you're saying you have so many um placement deals. But then I have a lot of producers I work with too, and they have a lot of placements as well, which is called musical beds. It's just the instruments, you know, just the mm -hmm. um just the you know, the instruments you know, behind the scenes. Uh, uh, like, you know, uh, I would say instrumentals, um, behind, you know, like behind the, uh, like the backdrop of a, you know, like a scene in a, a scene of a TV show. So mm -hmm. they call those musical beds. So I have a lot of producers that are signed to my publishing company and they make a living off of the deals I broker for them. All right, then. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, I, I just work hard. I just stay grounded, baby. Uh huh. Well, that's the, te that's the te label. Te teach your labor, your your Libra friend, how to be grounded, just like okay. you. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We can get this money I, together. <laughs> I, I can't sing now. I can't okay, I mean, but I mean, I'm sure you got other <laughs> gifts and talents. You know, I feel like everyone got something special about them, and they got everyone got a gift about them, but they just got to figure out what their purpose is. And once you know what your purpose is in life, mm -hmm. and you figure that out, that's when things will change for you you know well i appreciate it. i hope the listeners appreciate that nugget you just gave them yeah for sure all right so one of my other questions was we said what do you do besides music and you've already and i think that's what i like about you you're just so open and transparent and yeah, well, I, had a, I had a lot of media training too, so. <laughs> well, that's good. I ain't got to pull tea. <laughs> no doubt. Because <laughs> some of those interviews, I have to pull teeth and I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to lighten up. So what do you want people to know about you? Um, what I want them to know is that, you know, uh, my music is uh, a form of reality rap. And what I try to do is uh, talk about my life experiences or people that I've close to me have been through something. And um, I'm just trying to uplift my community. I'm trying to uplift the people. I'm trying to educate people through my music and show them there's opportunities. So, and um, some of my music, is, some of it's not going to be positive because I mm -hmm. went through some negative experiences. But you know, I talk about how I get out those situations. So mm -hmm. if um, so, I want them to know that you know, if you're looking to listen to my music, it's going to be motivational, whether you're in the gym or inspirational 
you know, inspirational where you're in a car driving or if you're going through a bad day or you need some, you need a, like an upliftment, you know what I'm saying? Like a, re, mm -hmm. a revival. So that's what my music represents. So that's what I want to, that's what I want everyone to know. Okay. It's coming, it's coming from the heart and the spirit. And who would you say is your influence? Who well, you I, have a lot of, I, have a, I have a lot of influences because I'm a musician and I grew up listening to a lot of different, like my musical opus is very broad. Like, you know, like my growing up, my mom listened to a lot of Jimi Hendrix, you know, so I listened to a lot of classic rock, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, a lot of disco and, you know, and then a lot of, uh, you know, Motown for my pops was a big Motown um, uh, advocate. So I listened to a lot of old school that like, you know, Betty White, uh, you know, um, Sam Cooke, you know, mm -hmm. Motown, like, you know, the, uh, uh, what's the name of uh, uh, the Four Tops. Uh, I mean, I, I listened to all that stuff, you know, James Brown, you know, I remember I had my pops had a lot of 45s. So I used to spin his 45s, you know, and I used to loop some of them James Brown, um, the, the, the beat breaks, you know, so mm -hmm. um, that's, I have a lot of influences. And then like, as we start to transition into hip hop, you know, I was still young, but you know, I caught, you know, the Rapper's Delight and, um, you know, all the, you know, early eighties influence like Run DMC when Aerosmith, when they merged rock and hip hop, you know, that was a big deal. So I have a lot of those influences too, Big Daddy Kane, you know, um, listen to a lot of Big Daddy Kane growing up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you know, Eric B and Rakim, you know, Nas, you know, um, you know, what's the name? Uh, 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 Smooth the Hustler. I, I mean, I, I, I can't, I mean, it can go on. I listen to so many, so many different influences. So I have, I have a lot of different influences, but, you know, listen to a lot of Nas, a lot of Jay-Z and L. Cool J, you know, and then you have pop, you know, I listen to a lot of pop artists too. So, and then I listen to a lot of rock, you know, like White Snake, uh, you know, Arrow Smith, um, you know, System of a Down, you know, I, it's, it's very broad, you know, then I have a lot of jazz, you know, like um, went, went from Marcellus, you know, um, mm -hmm. Larry Bird, you know, Charlie Parker, you know, so it, it, it goes, I can keep going, you know. So, so where, where would you want people to place your music? Um, I don't, I don't think I, I want, I don't want to put, be put in a box. I don't want to be categorized, you know what I'm saying? Like I, like my, I, I want my, I'm fusing everything right now. So like I'm creating my own box right now. Okay. Very good. So we didn't talk about your, your, uh, famous aunt. Okay. What about her? <laughs> so, so I was just going to ask, when did you know that she was like this big deal? Um, I went to a concert in Boston and Tommy Davidson was opening up for her. And then like I went backstage and I met Tommy Davidson and, and I thought that was the coolest thing because in Lemon Color was big, big at that time. So I was like, okay, my aunt's famous. She, you know, he's opening, she's, he's opening up for my aunt. So she, he, she gotta be big. So, so that's when I kind of like knew. Um, but, you know, I kind of just did my own thing for a long time. Like a lot of people didn't even know she was my aunt, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, being in Boston and New England, you know, the music scene is very competitive, but, you know, I still did my thing. I, you know, I, I fought my way to make a name for myself in New England. And then I kind of hit a ceiling in New England and I moved to New York. And then from New York, I met my publicist and then I was back and forth to LA. And that's when things really popped off. You know, that's when I met, um, uh, Ray J and then Ray J really put, actually Ray J put mm -hmm. me on. Be real talk, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. So the West coast put me on, but you know, I made a name for myself in Boston and gave me the grit. It gave me the hustle, but you know, um, LA, the West Coast put me on. So what piece of advice did your aunt give you that you were holding on to? Um, it's really jacked up, but um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the truth. She said, Robert, when you have success, you got to watch over friends and family. Wow. Wow. And it's true? It's true. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell you. So... <laughs> So, um, I, I, so when she passed away, um, she, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I started this nonprofit with this uh, guy named Justin Springer in Boston, and we raised ten thousand dollars to build a mural at Jerry Mari Burke. So I reached out to everybody, friends, family, everybody. Not one of them donated. Not one of them. Really. And yeah, yeah, not one of them donated. I don't, you know, there were some anonymous, but. I reached out to a lot of people, a lot of family members, and it was just, it was, I was shocked. Like a lot of them didn't support the, didn't support it. But then when 
you know, I've raised the money. I got a lot of press. I was on Fox News and all that stuff and the grand opening for the mural and them, they really you know, they, they showed up for that. And then, you know, then the city approached me, uh, you know, City Hall approached me and they wanted to, you know, do the celebration of summer at City Hall. Um, they all showed up for the event, you know, and I was just like, whoa, like she was not lying, you know, so hmm. you know. It was a hard, it was a harsh, it was a harsh lesson to, le- to learn, right. but, but you know, it was something that needed to be learned. So. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And I always wondered, you know, like uh, when I interview people asking them, you know, who gave them advice as they were going through and what was that advice? Mm-hmm. So what kind of advice would you give to um, artists that are starting out now? Um, get your paperwork in order. Um you know, register yourself to ASCAP or BMI, whatever, whatever one it is, make sure you have your split sheets in order. Anything you do with anyone you collaborate with, make sure you have your paperwork in order and make sure you start your own publishing company. All right. It's really easy to do. Don't think it's like some, you know, some hard thing to do. I did. Mm-hmm. I did all I did was Google stuff and, you know, and seek the knowledge and, um, you know, just have insane confidence and belief in yourself and don't, um collaborate as much as you can don't feel like um other artists are or um competition because there's only one you like you can't be like this other person so there's no competition you know and i when i was younger in my career you know i was a big i was big in the underground scene you know backpack rapping and all that stuff in new england and you know i was different but i wanted to fit into that group because that's the group that i admired but i was so different I, re- I now I understood why I got all the hate because I was just so multi-talented. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. had they had a ceiling. I didn't. I know mm-hmm. how to read music. I know how to read notes. They know how to do none of that stuff. Right. You know, so it's you know, so just have the same faith and confidence in yourself and collaborate as much as possible with people who want to collaborate with you. If you reach out to people and then I get back to you, it wasn't meant to happen. So work with the people who want to work with you. Don't chase. Don't don't try to clout chase because at the end of the day. A lot of these people online, they may have numbers and this and that, but who's really buying their stuff? Who's converting? Uh, how are they converting those, those into sales? You know, a lot of them aren't. Right. And I was going to and I was going to say Robert Glasper actually posted probably a couple of weeks ago on his page and said, uh, this is to all of you who have all these numbers um, and saying you have all these followers, but I want to tell you what real following is. He said those people are not coming to your shows those yeah you're impressing not, the wrong people yeah so yeah. so that is always interesting because i think that we do look at numbers now we we're always looking at numbers and saying mm-hmm. okay well they they don't have anybody and i do look at engagement if i see somebody who has like a hundred thousand followers and i see you got a picture up and you only got two likes yeah there's a problem yeah. <laughs> that's a huge problem I, yeah. I i went on my page and i was like i'm deleting some of y'all daggone people because i should have more yeah that's, that's, a, that's a problem yeah that's a problem <laughs> <laughs> for sure so uh let's talk about your project do it for the gram how okay. did you come up with the concept well um I have a really good friend of mine. I know him from almost, I say almost, I say over 12, over 15 years now. Um, mm-hmm. International Excel, DJ Excel. Yes, and, um, I interviewed him. Yeah, yes. so um, we did some stuff um, back in the day. Uh, we did a, a, a remix back in the day. We just we just uh, work really well together. Our mm-hmm. chemistry is very, uh, uh, we have like a musical marriage kind of together. So mm-hmm. he sent me the beat and... I don't know. It just when I heard the hook, when I heard the beat, it that hook just came like, just came right to me like, do it for the grant, do it for the grant, let do it for the grant. And then um, I was like, click, take a pick, do it for the grant, do it for the grant. And then I, that just stuck with me, and I I just referenced the hook. I said to him, he's like, yo, this is fire. Give me the verses. Give me the verses. And um, yeah, I just gave him the verses, and then after that, it was that was it. Mm-hmm. You know. So I don't really um, I don't really write things on paper no more. Everything's like pretty much um it's like I write in my head and then like I kind of um I'll reference it like I'll punch and you know I'll punch and record now um it just works that better for me that way and plus working with um um work with working with like Grammy uh Grammy award-winning producer detail um I kind of got I kind of got catapulted 
to step my uh, elevate myself. He's also he's okay. also a leader too. He's also okay. a leader too. So, okay. so we were in the first our first session. He, he was listening to my music. He was an asshole when I first met him too. <laughs> we can be really, that way because we about our business. We yeah, want it but, right. but I, I was quiet. I was quiet. I didn't even say nothing. I was just quiet. I was letting my people's handle the handle the business, you know, because he wanted to make sure we had the bread. You know what I'm saying? So we were like, you know, I let my people handle it. And it was like, we got the money here. You know, we have it. So he was listening to my music. And then he heard me say something like, you know, um, yeah, get your sprung. Come hang with a Libra loan. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, you a Libra? And he was like, we, I was like, yeah. And he was like, yo, he's a star, man. He's a star. We're going to get this going. You know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> and, then, and then, like, I came, like, I just matched, I just matched his energy, you know? You know, mm-hmm. he, made, he made the beat right in front of me. I was writing it in my head and then he, he came, he went in and laid the hook and I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? I went in, went in and laid the verses and he's like, yo, this is your, your star. He's like, your star. So every time I was around detail, that's what we was doing. Like when we were in Miami at the hit factory, you know, with Chris Brown, Lil Wayne and all these people, that's all they did. So I just had to elevate my, I had to step my game up, you know? So right. I, it was pretty much like freestyling, but it was like pre-med, it's like premeditated freestyling because I'm actually really thinking about stuff recording in my head and then laying it out laying it out on you know in the, in the mm-hmm. studio so um that's when just that's what i do now so and my aunt did it too i didn't realize that till i got in the studio where she didn't write nothing on paper either mm-hmm. so it was so like let's talk oh I'm sorry, go ahead i'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, don't, I don't want to interrupt no it's just like some divine stuff i can't even explain it it's, it's, mm-hmm. Ill. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. Ill. but you can do i think you could do it if you if you're really if you if you're really meant to do it you know mm-hmm. so my daughter she looks at me like i'm crazy like we write together me and my daughter write together she and how old is your daughter it. she's 24 okay yeah you got it okay 24 year old okay yeah 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 <laughs> oh, no, i'm not counting i'm not counting it's, it's okay I, I don't i don't it don't it don't matter to me but um yeah she just looks at me like i'm crazy because she's like i can i, I can't do that you know but I, it's just a gift i, I can't i can't explain it mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what about uh, the project you and your aunt did together? I heard it on some of your clips. Angel. Okay, so that single's called Angel. It's out right now. Y- y'all can check it on Spotify, or whatever uh, streaming platform. So I wrote the hook for that. So uh, what happened was I, I used to go to Nashville that, a lot and mm-hmm. visit her and, and produce some stuff. Like I did a remix with her and Ziggy Marley on her Crayons album. So I, I remixed I that. that yeah. Yeah, so I remixed that, and then we started to work some more. And she was like, eh, that, ain't, "That ain't it, that ain't it, that ain't it." You know, I mean, you know, she's she's the queen, so it's like she's like, "Rob, when you have a hit, I'll let I'll definitely let you know." So she sent me back to you know, back to Boston with my tail tucked in, you know, and um, I just went back to the drawing board. That's that's mm-hmm. what I do. Like I, you know, it's challenging for me. So um, I wrote this hook called. I just heard this beat from uh, my, my um, producer Oliver Gray. And I was like, let me get that beat. And then um, I came up with the hook. I sent it to my uncle Bruce. She called me back in five minutes. She's like, that's it. You got it. And um, went to LA, went to, and we were, uh, laid it down at Paramount. And mm-hmm. that was it, it was a wrap. So um, producing it now, why? I mean, it's putting it out now. Oh, it's been out, it's been out. Okay. Yeah. So are you pushing, pushing it, or it's just, it's just. Nah, it's out. It's, it's out. It's, it's out. It's just, it's. I'm just getting royalties from it. <laughs> okay. You look. You said I'm just. Hey. I'm, <laughs> money, 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 money. Yeah, it's, it's been out for a while now. So, but I didn't, but I didn't put it out for a while because when I initially, when I, when I was trying to push it to promoters and people, bloggers. They, I, don't, I don't know they didn't want to do with it and then when she passed away they wanted the record and they wanted to me to i'm like push it and i'm like bro like i'm like y'all like now she's dead you want me to capitalize off her death y'all make me sick you know so i i didn't really i didn't do nothing for for a while you know i said mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna put her in pause i was grieving too so and i got sick with the music industry too for a while you know because of that and um i just took a little break and i got in the business i got in the music publishing side and while I was doing music publishing, I was just ghostwriting and doing stuff for TV and film. And then I put it, I released it back out. I think, I, yeah, I released it out, uh, I think around 2000 and uh, I would say 2016 or 18. So okay. it's been out for a while. And every time I, I, perform, I usually perform it um, at City Hall. Um, 
the end for the celebration of summer because that's where we do the event to honor her legacy. So, you know, every time I perform and I talk about it, you know, the streams go up and, you know, a lot of people purchased it. So, you know, I, it's a blessing for me. I think, you know, it's hindsight 2020, you know, she says, you know, I'm gonna be an angel watching over for you, but, you know, she, she you know, it, it's bittersweet, but, you know, she blessed me with this record that I can have, you know, for right. forever and it's legacy, you know, it's, right. you know, it's legacy that's gonna be passed down to my children. You know? Awesome. So what's on your playlist right now? Three songs on your playlist, your top uh, three. Yo, I've been watching um y'all you heard of Use K? No. This TV show on Netflix. It's an anime series. Um uh what's his name? Um it's a soundtrack, but it's amazing. it's an amazing soundtrack. Um mm -hmm. it's a uh, Flying Lotus. You don't know if you ever heard of him? Mm -mm. Um yeah, so yeah, so I've been I've been listening to Use K, Nas, the new Nas album. Okay. His disease and i've been listening to my man ponzo houdini that's why I, that's that's kind of what i've been listening to lately okay and then my, my home my, my homeboy eddie fish we grew up together so i, I rock you know what I'm saying i've been listening to eddie fish like i just i just rocking with him today okay so i'm writing some of these down mm -hmm. yeah right use k, use k is spelled with a u mm -hmm. uh no y i'm sorry y u i mean i'm sorry y a s U K E. Y A S. Um, y A S U K E. Okay. And where are they? Where is he out of? Or she? Oh uh, no! It's a it's a it's a sound it's a, it's a soundtrack to the to the uh, actual uh, TV show. Um, Use K. Okay. All He's right. a black. He, it's a black samurai. He was a black samurai in the eighteen hundreds. So I I take it you like a lot of anime. I like some anime. It gotta be, it gotta, it's adult. I like fly stuff though, not like that silly stuff. I like the stuff that kind of takes me somewhere. I'm very creative. I like to go in different worlds when I watch TV. Mm -hmm. I, like, I don't I don't watch TV for like mindless TV. I like I like to go to somewhere else so I can get creative, you know. Okay. All right. And let's see what else I got. We talked about your creative process. Did I ask you your, what your creative process was? I don't even know what my creative process Well, I, I'm going to tell you, I like to, tr I travel a lot and I, I just like to experience life and culture. And that's what, that's why I get a lot of my creativity from. And I like to watch movies. Um, I like to go see theater, you know, um, any, any type. I like to see other creative things. I don't, that's outside of hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm not saying hip hop is my foundation, but I like to experience other things and bring it back into the hip hop and fuse it. Okay, cool. Trying to see what else I can. Like, oh, oh, Black Violin too. They're on my, my playlist. I went and seen them, uh, i say about a month ago. I don't know if you heard of them, Black Violin. You heard of them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Nah. They, they mix classical music and hip hop. You gotta check them out. Now, I know that, that I've heard a couple of, violinists that do that nah, check them out black violin okay, I'm, I'm gonna check it out i'm gonna check it out so if you weren't doing music what else would you be doing i'd be an entrepreneur i i'm actually doing what if i would i was actually doing if i wasn't like i got into corporate america because first i had an investor right so they invested a million dollars into my label all right but they didn't mm -hmm. they wanted total creative control so it, it didn't end up working out. So I didn't want to be in a position anymore where, you know, um, a, a investor would come and, you know, invest 100% into my company, then want total control. So even if they uh, investor did want to invest now, it's 50-50 because, you know, because now mm -hmm. I have multiple revenue streams now. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I, I'd, be an I'd be selling something or starting a company, doing, doing a startup. I'd be doing something. I, I just have entrepreneur spirit, so. Okay. All right, so let's talk about your next project. What you got going on? All right, um, my next project is going to be the Red Tape Volume Four. Um, it's almost complete. I'm just still work. I, I, just, I'm keep, I keep coming up with new music, so I'm like, should I break it in half? Or should I just go out with an EP? I don't know, you know. But the next, the next one's going to be the Red Tape Volume Four. The last, the the Red Tape Volume Three installation was kind of, you know, when mixtapes were a thing. 
So um, the third installation was uh, uh, hosted by uh, Chubby Chubb. That's my that's my dude. Um, but this one's gonna be more of a. This one's just gonna be like more of an album. Okay. Yep. So who would you like to work with? I'll be honest with you. I worked with a lot of the people that I wanted to work with already. Like Harris one, like he was one of the people I wanted to work with. Um, uh, Ray J was one I wanted to. I worked with a lot of different people and different producers that I really wanted to work with. Um, at this point, like I want to work with, I want to work with more young, talented people. I want to put more people on, you know, than work with people already on, you know. So that's my thing. Like I, I want younger. I'm, I'm inspired by the younger generation, you know. Like when I was younger, the older people didn't want to put me on, and I didn't want to. I said, when I get older, I'm, I don't want to be that old dude hating on the young generation. Like I want to give them wisdom and help them. In in return, they still keep me, you know, active in the game and tell me what's hip and tell me what's new, you know. That's a Libra. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That is definitely a Libra. We're always trying to teach and educate people. And I was disappointed better. too. I, I got disappointed with a lot of my, you know, I, you know, people I was like looking up to, like, oh wow, like, you know, they weren't who I thought they were. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, this is a facade. Like, you know, like, and nothing against them, you know, is but you know, it's just I've learned from those experiences, you know, and I just don't want to pass. I I want I want to be different. You know, and I and I think with that, as you say that, it, it makes sense because when you talk to people who have actually been on labels, especially like our older or um, our well, old bitter, artists, though. huh? Well, I'm a bitter because they don't own their masses; they don't own nothing. <laughs> so and the, and the way they had to work, but they also have, and I and I hope some of them hear me. Um, they also have a sense of entitlement. So they, True. because the label did everything for them, right. you know, now in this era where people are pushing, mm -hmm. they, you know, they don't feel they have to do anything. I mean, some of them do earn that. Some of them did earn that right, you know, yeah. but I, I mean, I, I've, I, what I've learned from a lot is what not to do. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. So I uh, got a couple of things I need you to do before we close out this interview. Okay. One is I need you to let everybody know how to get in touch with you. Okay. All you got to do is holler at me in my Instagram, my IG. It's Omega Red Superfan. It's Omega Red and Superfan is spelled S-U-P-A-F-A-N. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Please make sure you get us your new music. And um, it has definitely been a pleasure to hang out with another Libra. Especially in the first day of Libra season. It's Libra season, baby. <laughs> gang, gang, gang. So, and uh, I appreciate I appreciate you having me on this platform, Missy E. And um, I, I can't wait to, you know, meet you in person. Are you, where, where are you at, actually? Where are you living? I'm actually in Georgia. You're in Georgia? Like Atlanta? I work in Atlanta, but I okay. live in Macon. Okay, I got a lot of family in Cascade and Marietta. Cascade? Yeah, Cascade, yep. Okay. And do you know Marietta? I do know where Marietta okay, is. Yeah, don't I don't know where Cascade is, but I do know where Marietta <laughs> okay, is. Okay, yeah, I got a lot of family over there. Like, okay. Fulton, Fulton, like Fulton County. Fulton County, okay. So are you talking about the street Cascade? No, I'm talking about like the I'm talking about the county cascade, but it's right oh, there. See, I Fulton. do not know where the county can. I'm gonna have to look that up. Okay, cool. All right. So um, yeah, when you in town, please hit me up. Yeah, right now I'm we're, right now I'm currently we're going on a um, mini tour with Ponzo Houdini. He's in Atlanta. I think I got, I think there's gonna be a couple of shows in Atlanta, so I'm definitely gonna let you know about that. Okay, yes, please do, please All do, right. so we can we can come out and and support you. I appreciate so the love. I appreciate it. It has it has been a pleasure. Um, do it for the gram is definitely hitting a lot of areas. Like I said, I saw it on a TV commercial. All right, I, I, all right. I'm gonna, <laughs> see, I'm gonna see that check when it comes. <laughs> So thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you as well for locking in and hanging out with us today. Uh, please make sure you support the artist Omega Red and make sure you click like, share and subscribe on the Urban Influencer Radio. I'm your girl, Missy E, the party doll. Again, it has been a pleasure. Follow me on Missy E. Johnson on Facebook, Missy Party Doll on Instagram and Missy E. Party Doll on Twitter. It has been a pleasure again. Mwah. Have an amazing an evening. Flick, take
take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, do do it for the gram. Like like like, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram. Who care about your man? Do do it for the gram. Friday night, girls are ready. Go get your hair done, manis and petties. No other like you, even though many try to throw shade. Basic, so petty. Hashtag sexy, going down in the DM. Boys try to handcuff you, got your freedom. First class flight, gone for the weekend. No special occasion, do it for no reason. Bounce, bounce, bounce baby, baby, make it bounce now. Boomerang, back it up, baby, back it up now. Do your thing, drop it real low. How low can you go now? Bring it back up, nice and slow. Ass is outrageous, you insta famous, shameless, body so thick, what your name is? No filter, yeah girl, you slaying it, forget about your man, I could be the replacement. Flick, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, do, do it for the gram. Like, 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 take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram, who care about your man? Do do it for the gram. Flashing lights, fleek on ready. Strike a pose, you know these hoes ain't ready. Wine pond me, make me bust like a semi. Mix your elixir, liquor got plenty. Glado, fumado, smoking on gelato. Junk in your trunk like cargo, you model. Pop bottles in the club, let me sparkle. Original Don Dada, King Mufasa. Bounce, bounce, baby, baby, make it bounce now. Boomerang, back it up, baby, back it up now. Do your thing, drop it real low. How low can you go now? Bring it back up, nice and Slow. Ass is outrageous, you insta famous, shameless, body so thick, what your name is? No filter, yeah girl, you slaying it, forget about your man, we can make arrangements. Flick, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, do, do it for the gram. Like, 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 take a pick, do it for the gram, do it for the gram, yeah, do it for the gram. Chick, take a pick, do it for the gram, who care about your man? Do do it for the gram. Bounce, baby, baby, make it bounce now. Boom my ring, back it up, baby, back it up now. Do your thing, drop it real low. How low can you go now? Bring it back up, nice and slow. Bounce, bounce, bounce baby, baby, make it bounce now. Boom my ring, back it up, baby, back it up now. Do your thing, drop it real low. How low can you go now? Bring it back up, nice and slow. Ass is outrageous, you insta famous. But I don't see For the past few We've been a little off key What's been going on in your mind, man? You've been going along in the night, man Maybe you're working No, I'm certain You wouldn't want to hurt me Cause I could do exactly what you do Yeah, baby, I'm a hell They wanna take me on yeah. the west side Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
Cause I've learned to be authentically me yeah. When I'm looking in the mirror Authentically me, me. Yeah. See my reflection Contemplating what will be Yes, I have goals, I'm making plans To be the best of me Cherishing every moment spent Improving on my heart and mind All negativity aside So many lessons I have learned But it takes meditation and aspiration, realizing you are precious. Yes, you're worth it. You are perfect. Yes, you are. You respect my journey. Oh, my journey. I'm going on this journey. Possibilities, oh, I'm going on this journey My full journey. of positivity and love. You see, I'm going on this journey. Oh, oh, oh. Full of endless possibilities. 
to.